All right, well, thank you everyone for joining us and thank you so much for, for your patience. We've been working out some technical difficulties, but thank you for being here. Um, my name is Kendall. For those of you I have not met, I'm one of the social workers here at the Orange County Department on Aging. And um, I, I facilitate this caregivers education series. And today we've got our two wonderful MSW interns, Kenesha Wood, who is a second year intern at UNC Chapel Hill in their uh, Master of Social Work program, and Kimeria Snipes, who is a, um, a first year student at the North Carolina Central MSW program. And they are here to talk about levels of care and what caregivers should know. So um, feel free. I think they'd like us to save questions for the end, but if you've got things that are in your head that you want to make sure you get out, feel free to use the chat function, and we will um, we'll make sure that we get all those answered um, either now or if it's something we have to look into, we will look into it and get back to you. Um, and I think that is all. I think we're all fairly familiar enough with Zoom, and it looks like everyone is muted, so, um, so that works out well. Um, but if anything, anyone has questions or technical difficulties, just um, just let us know and we'll get that sorted out. So Kim and Kanisha, I will turn it over to you all. Good afternoon. My name is Kimiria Snipes and I'm here with Kanisha Wood. We are Master of Social Work students interning with the Orange County Department on Aging. And thank you all for coming to today's presentation, which we will be talking about levels of care for people you are caring for, um, important documents you may need while providing care. And we will also touch on self-care, taking care of you. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna look at um, in-home services. In-home services are provided to seniors who have chosen to remain in their own homes. Another name for this is aging in place. These services are also for caregivers who may need extra support periodically or more frequently for seniors who live with a family member. The aging population should never feel like they are not supported. Aging in place. Look at these two. I cannot assume they are married, but what I can see is that two seniors are enjoying lunch in the comfort of being at home. So let's look at some um, supports for aging in place. Um, seniors who remain at home can get support if they need it. Home health agencies can provide services such as administering medication, like house cleaning and grocery shopping, just to name a few. If there are family members that live close, they can stop by to check on their loved ones. Then we have adult daycare centers that provide a gathering place for seniors who enjoy being in the company of others. And then we have adult daycare, adult day, can be a lifesaver for working um, caregivers as well because these centers can provide a safe place for seniors to go while caregivers are working outside of the home. That introduces the next topic, when can caregivers and seniors both need a break? Caregivers, it is okay to take a break whether it is go out to go, go out to lunch or, for, or even for a couple of days, it is okay. Believe it or not, your senior may need a break too. That is why respite care may be an option for you both. Respite care is designed to provide breaks for caregivers. 
they can come to the home or they can accommodate you at one of their respite centers. Respite staff are trained to support seniors. Caregivers, you can feel safe and know that your seniors will be well taken care of in these centers. Also, as far as for the caregivers who have friends and family that are near, call on them, especially the individuals who offer their, their support. Take them up on their offer. These wonderful humans are being sincere and really want to help. Okay, let's take a look at assisted living. Assisted living facilities are licensed through the Division of Health Service Services Regulation, which is a part of the Department of Health and Human Services. There are two types of assisted living, keeping the living, which are acute family care homes or multi-unit assisted living homes and um, just assisted care homes. They are both regulated through the Department of Health and, Health and Human Services, but the multi-level homes do not need to obtain a license as um, with the assisted care homes. They both must follow the rules of the state of North Carolina for operating a home. Anybody wishing to become a resident must be able to complete tasks, be able to enter into a contract on their own, and they cannot be a danger to themselves or others. An assessment should be performed within three days of moving into the home, and then another assessment should be completed within 30 days. All assessments should be performed by a physician. As for multi-unit care, an assessment will be done by the doctor to determine if the facility is able to meet the needs of the resident and to determine if a more detailed assessment should be completed by the home health care agency who serves the multi-unit facility. Assistant living homes are staffed 24 hours a day. Staff also arrange for transportation needs, personal care, social activities, and housekeeping needs. Nursing home or skilled nursing is the next highest level of care um, with the hospital providing the highest level. Nursing homes also provides 24 hour care that will be covered by nurses, uh, CNAs, CMAs, uh, even activities. Patients will be assigned to the facility's doctor. Um, as a caregiver, you can opt out of this option, but care may be more difficult because the facility's doctor will be able to come to see your loved one. Um, and then if you choose one outside, you may have to go leave with your loved one and go out. Um, the facility would be responsible for activities of daily living, rehab, such as speech, OT, PT, wash and clothes, and um, provide meals as well. Due to COVID, there are staff shortages everywhere. And unfortunately, assisted livings, nursing homes, they aren't exempt from this. One thing I have learned is that if a caregiver feels they need more hands or eyes on their loved one while in a facility, you could consider having or hiring a sitter um, for your loved one as a pet, uh, extra pair of eyes or ears um, or assistance. And so in Orange County, an example of a nursing home would be um, Parkview Health and Rehab Center. So uh, caregiver tips on finding placement. So let's take a moment and breathe. Patients could be um, DC or discharged directly from the hospital to a facility, or as a caregiver, you've decided your loved one has increased needs that you can no longer fulfill. Whatever the reason, I wanna let you know today that it is okay. Caregiving could be difficult, especially if this is your first time going through this journey. And so I want to highlight some things for you um, to look or to ask for um, when choosing a facility. 
So at the top, I have the medicare.org and it's a nursing home compare site. And so this website allows one to compare nursing facilities in a given location. Um, so it'll allow you to look Orange County, Durham County, whichever county. Um, and it's actually developed by the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid or CMS. And they use a five-star rating system to classify the quality. But I want to encourage you to use it, but do not solely go based upon the ratings um, on the website, but it is a good tool to kind of allow you to shop around on the web. So you also want to be sure that the facility that you choose um, can address individual needs. So ask about special dietary needs. For example, if your loved one um, maybe is living with celiac disease, ask the hard questions. Um, what is the place for what's in place for special diets? Um, what's the process of getting the, that food in? See how they respond and are they helpful or dismissive? All nursing facilities should provide skilled nursing and therapy services um, designated to accommodate a patient's specific health needs. And they should also um, be providing or guide you through the process of um, their obtaining durable medical equipment or DME. So that would be um, wheelchairs, hospital beds. Um, you should always have a way to allow them to assist you with that. Visit during meal times, evening hours on the weekends or when staff um, are changing shifts. So if you could just observe these time periods and you'll be able to kind of see the culture and practices for yourself for that particular facility. Um, nursing homes often look best during the weekdays um, and may not be at their fullest <laughs> on the weekends because they may be um, less staff. Um, so those also times to choose when you could possibly visit more or you can have family or friends visit, uh, have a sitter come in, or if you could take your family member out of the facility on an outing or just take them home. So that'd be a good time to kind of determine, um, you know, what, what can you do to um, increase the care for your family member. Location, location, location. It is encouraged to look for a facility's location to be close to the patient's friends and family so that they can visit on a regular basis. Um, the more familiar faces, the better. Tour several areas of the facility. So this includes the dining room. Um, see if they have an open room available. Um, you can also see, too, if residents are engaged in conversation, if they appear to need assistance with meals, are they receiving that help? Um, also, you can see um, the difference between maybe an independent room versus a room that they have to share. Are they able to personalize um, the room? Also ask about restraint use. So going back to asking the hard questions. So um, the nursing home reform law bans the use of restraints, physical or chemical. And so just look around and see, you know, what you're seeing. Um, these are all good ways to see if this facility fix your loved one and you approve as well. Um, so also ask about lost items. So ask the nursing home, um, how do they address prevention of loss or theft? Um, in my experience, you see a lot of these problems around laundry. And so the family does have the, the option to take their, their loved one's clothing out and wash it themselves, or the facility can wash, but just ask so you can know ahead of time, what's the policy um, when clothing is missing? Also label, 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 label everything. <laughs> that is also important as well. Hospice and palliative care. Um, hospice is special care to reduce physical or emotional pain of someone who is at end of life. Um, hospice services can be given whether the person, wherever the person calls home. And so this can be a private home, 
a facility, a hospital, or at a hospice home. Palliative uh, health care provides um, relief of chronic pain and suffering for patients. The goal of palliative care is to improve the quality of life in all areas of the patient's life, including physical, emotional, spiritual, and social concerns due to advanced illness. Um, the patient does not have to be terminally ill in order to qualify in order to qualify for um, palliative care. And this service can also be offered in a family, offered to, I'm sorry, um, palliative care support groups can be offered to family and friends as well. Uh, hospice also has support groups as well for the family um, and the resident. And I also wanted to highlight a local social group. Um, Orange County actually holds a deaf cafe held by Sarah Williams. And so their next meeting is actually tonight, uh, February 23rd at 6 p.m. and it's virtual. And so this is a space that is less of a support group, but more of a social group. And they hold uh, discussions of surrounding around uh, end of life care. And so two important um, things to know about caregiving and facilities that I wanted to highlight um, is the term care plan meetings and the ombudsman program. And so um, during the care plan meeting, you review health conditions and you put in place early interventions for your loved one. So this begins on the day of admission and must be completed within 14 days um, of admission and at least every 90 days after the first review and possibly more often if the medical status changes. The meeting includes the interdisciplinary team which are made up of nurses, social workers, CNAs if available, the minimum data set coordinator or MDS coordinator, um, activities, dietary, and most importantly, the family. Um, during this time, you can talk about issues, you can talk about issues um, that's going on, if they're hitting any goals, if they're hitting any goals um, or not, and dietary issues. The next would be the ombudsman program. And I say, I wanna encourage you all to use the ombudsman program. Um, this provides a way for people to voice their concerns and have their complaint, complaints addressed. The ombudsman works with all parties to resolve any problems or issues yourself as a caregiver or the patient may have. Uh, the program covers assisted living, independent living, nursing homes. When you enter a facility, the location, the local ombudsman's information along with residents' rights should be up and available in plain view for the family and your loved one to use. And um, I have posted down here the uh, local for Orange County ombudsman. Her name is Autumn Cox. And I have posted her um, email address and number and fax as well. So um, two good, two good, uh, programs, care, care plan meetings, I'm sorry, in the ombudsman program. So some important documentations that in my experience, caregivers had told me uh, makes moving into different uh, phases of caregiving or phases of uh, care homes uh, more easier for them. So as much as we want our loved one to stay in the family home, have awesome health or not approach end of life care, we know one day these are some issues we may have to face in one form or another. I must warn you, if you haven't had these conversations before, it could be very challenging. 
Um, Orange County Department on Aging is here to guide you every step of the way. In the next couple of slides, we'll discuss um, in more detail the documents that I have listed um, to make your caregiving journey less stressful. So we're gonna talk about the FL2, the most form POA of health and financial in the living will. Um, and these are all forms that make sure that this stage of their life or your family member's life is respectful to the wishes or hopes your loved one has for end of, end of life or just in their older life in general. So the most in DNR, well, most form um, slash DNR. So medical orders for scope of treatment. Um, so it's written details on what the patient will want if they cannot make the decisions themselves. This form travels with your loved one to and from hospitals, discharges, hospice and palliative care. Um, and it's also referred to by medical staff in the facility before performing life-saving measures. Um, so in the event, you know, there was maybe a situation where someone was choking or um, whatever the case may be, they refer to this um, to see what measures to put in place. Um, the most form also lets you know if a patient wants to be resuscitated via CPR or if they want to be incubated or IV fluids. It goes specifically through how they would like their end of life to look. Um, it's a very important document to have while have completed while your family member can make choices um, on what they would like their end of life journey to look like. Um, so the sooner, the better to have these forms filled out. And this is my friend, the long-term FL2. Um, I am sorry for the fine print. However, the form isn't handwriting friendly in real life. Like this, <laughs> the small spaces is uh, what we have to work with. And so it's completed by your loved one's uh, primary care or um, their PCP. And in many experiences, um, I have had care caregivers think that this form is to be filled out annually and are surprised when told that this is not the case. Um, so on this form, the PCP gives their recommendation on um, level of care. So if your family member is moving from a home to an assisted living or from assisted living to a SNF or skilled nursing facility, this form will also always have to be filled out and renewed. Um, it also goes through your current medications, allergies, diagnoses, and you may, as a caregiver, find yourself um, on the phone to the PCP asking for, asking for this form to be filled out before you can move your family member from different levels of care or different facilities in general. Um, along with this form, along with TB testing, COVID testing now, uh, because we're in a pandemic at the moment, um, most likely are required 72 hours before admission date. Um, so it's, it's a very tight uh, time frame that they want this form along with other things filled out before you move your family member into a home. Okay, so now we're gonna um, talk about some more um, important, important documents, um, the living will and power of attorney. Um, the living will is a document that will let others know your wishes for medical treatment if you become ill and possibly not survive. Another name for the living will is advanced directive. It does just that. You have given directives in advance about what you want. There are instances um, whereas the living will becomes effective um, if you are unconscious and will not regain consciousness. When your prognosis for um, terminal illness is death in a short period of time, and if you are diagnosed with advanced dementia, that is irreversible. So you want to make sure that you have um, what you would like to be done in these instances um, in case these things happen. Um, now, looking at the power of attorney, 
The power of attorney is when a document is drawn up to give a trusted loved one the power to act on one's behalf. It is very important to understand that the power, power of attorney only works while the maker of the POA is not in, incapacitated. If incapacitation happens, the power of attorney would terminate immediately. However, if you are if you are durable power of attorney, it, it will survive if the maker becomes incapacitated. It is very important to discuss these options with your families. The durable power of attorney has the right to do everything just like he or she was the person they are acting on behalf for, paying bills, signing documents, contracts, looking into nursing and skilled nursing um, facilities, all of these actions and more. So we have so we have talked about a lot of about levels of care um, and how to best take care of senior needs. But what about the needs of the caregiver? Before we close, we would like to share this with our caregivers who do so much for our seniors. Wow. Um, this picture says volumes. On the outside, you appear to be calm, engaged, warm, grounded, and loving. But take a look at what is being held on the inside. Despair, grief, let down, sadness, and the tears that do not fall outwardly, outwardly but are kept inwardly as well. Caregivers, I encourage you today not to suffer in silence. Self-care is a way to help with some of these things that we see are being held inside of those hands. Self-care can take many forms. It is what makes you happy and peaceful. It is what gives you what you need to make it another day with the person you are supporting. So I'm saying all of this to say, self-care can be as big or small as you would like it to be. I know as caregivers, time is limited. I would like to share a gift with you by demonstrating how self-care can help you in a short period, period of time. In fact, it would only take about three minutes. Okay, I'm gonna see. It may not work, but um, if it will not work, we will send this to you all via email. We've been having some technical difficulties. Uh -huh. Oh, no, that's the first one. Yes. It's very, very quiet. So I don't know if we're going to be able to, to hear it, but we will okay. definitely send this out um, and some other some other helpful meditation pieces as well. But thank you so much for, for sharing that, Kim and Kanisha. And I don't want to cut you off. Was that the end? Was that the end for you all? Yes. Yes. Wonderful. I will stop recording and we can go ahead and touch base on some questions. So I'll go ahead and stop that so you all can speak freely.